their self-titled CD. It is their debut. It's called Boys Like Girls with the song The Great Escape from Boston. Boys Like Girls. If you were like me and found yourself at middle school or high school age somewhere in the 2007 through 2009 region, which, based on my YouTube analytics, most of you motherfuckers were, there's no doubt hit pop rock songs like The Great Escape or Thunder graced the libraries of your iPod Nano or little iPod Shuffle, the little one that looks like a tampon. You know what I'm talking about. The band in question who made these hits were the hair straightened, girls jeans rockin', and eventually cowboy boots wearing boys like girls. While Boys Like Girls were born from the roots of the pop punk and emo scene which graced Warped Tour stages and alternative press magazines across the world, and borrowed musically from bands like Newfound Glory and Fall Out Boy after their first self-titled record blew up in 2007, by the time the follow-up, 2009's Love Drunk, came around, Boys Like Girls were a full-on, shameless, mainstream radio pop rock act, musically sounding more like a Radio Disney approved Jonas Brothers-esque band and focusing more on big hit singles rather than a cohesive all killer no filler full length album. Singer Martin Johnson was even rumored to have been dating singer Taylor Swift around this time, another recent mainstream music celeb in 2009. After the emo-tinged pop rock movement died down in the mainstream around 2010, Boys Like Girls returned in 2012, believe it or not, with an album <laughs> that not many people have even heard of called Crazy World, a full-on knee-jerk musical pivot into straight-up like phony pop country music. Uh, this album is absolutely god awful, but we'll get more into it later in the video. Seriously, I think this is like the worst album of all time. Well, I've been waiting like all week long, and the DJ's thinking our favorite song. Uh, anyways. <laughs> And you know, uh, Boys Like Girls pretty much went away after Crazy World, but the impact of their first two records, Love Drunk's Moment in the Sun and the Mainstream, as well as their self-titled album's surprisingly profound impression on the underground warp tour pop rock scene, the impact of Boys Like Girls lives on and is to be respected and not laughed at, you filthy animals. Hello, my name is The Cozy Representative. Come with me as we explore the Boys Like Girls story. That's right, the last great American rock band. And yeah, the title of this video, it, it's kind of a joke. Yeah, okay, I wouldn't actually <laughs> call them the last great American rock band. I just, I just kind of thought that was funny. Don't take that too seriously. Don't be a nerd about it, all right? But in all seriousness, they really were the last great American rock band. You know, I think it's true. I think we can all unanimously agree on that. Anyways, the boys like girls story. Let's freaking go. Oh, but first, big thank you to everybody who supports the Cozy Representative, this YouTube channel on my Patreon. Big thank you to you guys who keep the lights on over here every month. Thank you so much for the support. If you want to help out this channel further, if you like what you're seeing and, you know, you want me to be able to keep doing this, you can go to the link in the description of this video and check out the uh the tiers hey i have a new podcast that i'm starting soon uh the cozy rep podcast there's going to be a lot of uh bonus uh features and whatnot from the podcast exclusively on the patreon in the coming months uh there will be more announcements about that uh in the future but yeah if you want to help support check out the tiers of my patreon the link is in the description and thank you so much once again to everyone who supports on there and with that out of the way onwards with the Freaking story, the last great American rock band. <laughs>
Boys Like Girls. Greatest band of all time. So check it out, y'all. The band Boys Like Girls formed pretty much the exact same way literally almost every other band on the planet is formed. They were all in different local bands playing alongside one another in their local scene, eventually joining forces with each other to form the pop rock outfit Boys Like Girls. Uh, some more info on that. Singer Martin Johnson was once a member of a band in the early 2000s who were originally called Fake ID, but later changed their name to The Drive. I couldn't find any music from that band online. I don't know if it exists anywhere, but that band, they were from Massachusetts, and Boys Like Girls are from a town called Andover, Massachusetts. And I, uh, your man, the cozy representative, I'm also from Massachusetts, so hometown pride. You see, interestingly enough, things got going really quick for the young Boys Like Girls. I mean, Let's put it into perspective here. It was late 2005 when they formed, and they couldn't have picked a better, more perfect time to start an emo-tinged pop rock band, you know, end of 2005, right? So bands like Fall Out Boy, My Chemical Romance, and Taking Back Sunday had all just blown up in the mainstream, uh, you know, and kicked the door down for, for the, the emo mainstream revolution, and what directly followed was a major label signing frenzy. You know, all the major labels were trying to find the next big emo pop rock band while the iron was still hot and the money was still coming in. This was when bands like Panic at the Disco and Cute is What We Aim For we're catching the direct aftershocks of this wave explosion and are two examples of bands who got signed to a label less than a year after forming their bands, making one record and instantaneously blowing up in the emo pop rock mainstream music scene. Those bands being Panic at the Disco and Cute is What We Aim For and Boys Like Girls are Boston Heroes were the next band to follow. So, in early 2006, the band began putting up demos of songs like The Great Escape and Thunder to their purevolume.com page. And the song started gaining online buzz right away, and off of that, I guess their music reached the right people because somehow the band very quickly got signed to major label Columbia Records. Pure insanity. And I wish there was more to the story than that. Maybe there is. But that's the gist of it, and it's pretty crazy. I mean, the same thing happened to Forever the Sickest Kids about a year or two later. They just put up some demos on pure volume, and they started going crazy online, and then boom, signed to Universal Motown Records in like four months. You see what I'm saying? Signing frenzy. Major labels were eating this emo pop shit up like it was a McDonald's double cheeseburger, and they hadn't eaten in days. So, in early 2006, the band went on their first ever tour, opening for some band called A Thorn for Every Heart. Have you ever heard of them? I've never heard of them. Some band from that time, who Boys Like Girls, eventually quickly became enormously bigger than. Uh, and according to the internet, Hit the Lights were on this tour too. I've heard of them. You probably know them too. A slightly bigger band from this time, but again, not nearly as gigantic as our Lone Rangers Boys Like Girls were about to become. After this one tour, j just this one tour, Boys Like Girls hit the studio in the spring of 2006 to record their debut full-length record for Columbia Freakin' Records. That's crazy. At the helm of production was producer Matt Squire, who had just previously done the first Panic at the Disco album, A Fever You Can't Sweat Out. I think he actually also did the first uh, Cute Is What We Aim For album, the same old Blood Rush with a new touch. See, you know, see, it's all connected. Um, and yeah, they hit the studio and it was officially time for boys like girls to make it or break it. What do you think's gonna happen? <laughs> So, Boys Like Girls, the self-titled record. You know, musically, 
Boys Like Girls were following in the footsteps of the pop rock band Cartel Certified Songbook. The all-American rejects emo-tinged radio pop rock with the spirit of 80s hair metal path to songwriting success with a hint of big 90s accessible alternative pop rock stylings of Jimmy Eat World creeping in there as well. You see, Boys Like Girls were not an emo or a post-hardcore affair. No, no, no. They were not following in the footsteps of Thursday or Sayosin. This was strictly a pop rock event. Music that was tailor-made for the teenage as well as the tween age girls of the era. And me, apparently. Oh, me as well. <laughs> Personally, you know, at this point in time, looking back, I don't know if I would call Boys Like Girls 2006 self-titled record to be a great album necessarily, but I would say it's certainly a very good effort when it came to, you know, accessible pop rock music in 2006. I'd say the singles are definitely the best songs on the album. Uh, you know, there are some filler tracks here or there, and there's definitely plenty of moments of pure pop cheese. Um, <laughs> Boys Like Girls certainly weren't breaking any new ground here musically, but what they did have were a handful of soaring, memorable, and potentially era-defining big hit singles and band members with good looks and star power to boot. I mean, what more do you need, really, to succeed in 2006? Or, you know, or now, really. You know, that's kind of the... That's kind of the, uh, the, the, the recipe for success, you know, if you ask me. Big pop singles and cute boys, am I right? So, on this record, The Boys Like Girls self-titled, some non-single, you know, deeper cuts on the album, which I would like to mention that I enjoy, uh, you know, Me, You, and My Medication. I like that song a lot. It's a darker, kind of vibier track on the album. Dance Hall Drug has a pretty cool, like, swing feel to it, you know, and the song heels overhead pretty much set the bar for how catchy and cheesy your melodies had to be if you were a neon pop rock act following boys like girls in 2007 through 2009 but aside from those songs and the singles you know songs like on top of the world or up against the wall tend to kind of blend together for me in a frenzy of bland pop rock and the track learning to fall is about as unlistenably corny as a pop rock song can get but <laughs> I digress. Boys Like Girls was a very solid record as a whole, and before long, the band literally took over the world of catchy, emo-tinged pop rock in its mainstream heyday. Boys Like Girls, the self-titled debut album from the band, was released on August 22nd of 2006, and obviously Boys Like Girls were still a very new and, you know, practically unheard of band at this time outside of the internet, outside of purevolume.com, and this was their very first release over Overall, they didn't have an EP or anything before it, so there wasn't much success upon initial release. The album didn't sell all that well at first, and the song Hero Heroine was released as the first single of the album with a music video, but it failed to chart and made no impact at radio or MTV. But then, my friends, <laughs> something happened. In March of 2007, track one on the Boys Like Girls album, entitled The Great Escape, was released as a single, and frankly, lightning struck, and the dream finally happened for the boys. The song blew up. <laughs> the music video started gaining regular rotation on MTV, and the song itself actually did start gaining radio play and hit the Billboard Hot 100 chart, which is like the big ch chart for singles, peaking at number 23, which is really impressive you know they were they started taking off and when it comes to this song the great escape it's really no wonder you know to me it's no fluke it's no coincidence it's no anomaly that this song made the mainstream impact that it did the song itself if you listen to it specifically the anthemic soaring powerful chorus the great escape is clearly a 100 percent bona fide hit it's pop rock gold really um so let's talk about great escape um that one i know it hit the charts on trl and a lot of different things uh where did that song come from uh it's just a song the great escape is a song about uh you know youthfulness and getting you know graduating you know high school or whatever like could be graduating taking the next step yeah it's job. like taking the next step mm -hmm. and having that one big night <laughs> 
It all kind of came at once, didn't it? How did that feel? Uh, it, it's been a gradual build, I think. You know, I mean, people see it that way because it's like, you know, the media. But for us, it's been like this mm -hmm. slow. Yeah. So y'all been touring, doing a lot of touring and stuff? Yeah, yeah. We've been touring for like two and, a, two and a half years or something straight, pretty much. So after the success of the song The Great Escape in early 2007, the first single Hero Heroin was actually kind of like essentially re-released by the label uh, as a single and with a new music video for it was made as well uh, and it did gain success this time around and it did impact MTV and radio and that song Hero Heroin peaked at number 43 on the Billboard Hot 100 following the success of The Great Escape. Now by the summer of 07 on the strength of these two singles starting to reach mainstream success and the full album Boys Like Girls now charting on the Billboard 200 as well, Boys Like Girls were now experiencing really the elusive rock star dream which most young musicians grow up fantasizing about. It was their time! So before we move on to even more big success for young, fresh-faced Boston rockers, boys like girls, I want to quickly go over some of their touring history in this early period of their career. It's kind of cool. Before they blew up on the radio back in 06, they were playing shows with bands like Spittlefield and Punchline. End of 06, they hopped on a bill with the All-American Rejects and Motion City Soundtrack, which is a pretty perfect tour for them at the time. Early 07 saw some dates opening for Cobra Starship and Cartel, another good fit for these young, spunky, youthful pop rockers. As The Great Escape started to hit the Billboard charts in spring and summer of 07, the band hopped on a bill with fellow neon hype creators Hello Goodbye, as well as emo indie darlings The Hush Sound. That led into Summer on the Warp Tour. And then in the fall of 07, the band went out on their very first headlining tour, which was called Torzilla, a really great bill if you're into the neon pop rock bands of the era. It was alongside the audition, We the Kings, and All Time Low. Come 2008, it was on to more continued success for the band, who were really just dominating at this time. Like, they, they really were, like, the next All-American Rejects or something like that. Uh, they put out a third single, a nice sort of you know, power ballad of a track called Thunder. Beautiful song, which peaked at number 76 on the Billboard Hot 100 and became a gold single. You know, not as big as The Great Escape, but come on, it's, you know, it's freaking up there. Their other singles were still blowing up too. Hero Heroin eventually went gold and The Great Escape eventually went platinum. The full album Boys Like Girls also went gold sometime around 2008. They were achieving the total rock star dream at this point. Whoa! Bust out the Jack Daniels and the illicit big boy drugs. It's time for your arena tour Boys Like Girls. You're heading out with Good Charlotte on the soundtrack of your summer tour in the summer of 2008. Anyways, the debut record cycle couldn't have possibly gone better for our heroes, boys like girls, you know? I bet, the, I bet Columbia Records was like, amazing job, guys. This is exactly what we want out of a new band. Um, you know, but now it was time, uh, you know, expectations were beginning to rise for boys like girls to follow up this success with album number two. Not an easy feat for most bands who are so quickly sprung into the limelight. So, my friends, will Boys Like Girls beat the odds and knock it out of the park yet again? Or were they just a fluke who happened to make the right lightning in a bottle pop rock record at the right time destined for the dreaded sophomore slump? What's going to happen to Boys Like Girls?